terrible job. The song says worth, and he thought you were worth dying for this morning and me. Aren't you glad about that today? All right, we're going to do a brand new song here in the choir this morning. If they'll stand up for me. Dr. Ed Ayers is going to do the solo work on this one. So you pray for us as we sing just now, we stand as one.
He's coming back again. I want you to stand this morning, love someone right next door to you, just as we prepare to worship today. I am so thankful, Lord, that when you died, look, when you said it is finished, Lord, and you gave up your spirit on that cross, Lord, you gave your life up, Lord, you laid your life down, no one took it from you, God, and when you did that, in that moment, Lord, that veil was ripped in the Holy of Holies, God, it was ripped from top to bottom, Jesus, and because of that, Lord, because that veil is torn, Lord, we can go into the Holy of Holies, God, your presence is an open door, God. If we're here this morning and we're distracted with other things and, and we just feel like we've been stuck for so long in the same place, maybe stuck in the same sin, stuck in the same attitude, God, if we are feeling that, Lord, it's probably because of us. Lord, you haven't moved. God, you're right there, Lord. You are faithful. God, you are constant. You are consistent, Jesus, in this crazy world of chaos that things are always changing and always moving, Lord. But God, you are the one constant in Jesus. I pray, Lord, this morning that if somebody has just been kind of peeking into the Holy of Holies, if they have not gone in, Lord, to, to your presence, Lord, if it's been a really long time, 
God, that they would step into your presence this morning, God, because it is an open door all because of what you did on the cross. Lord, that we would come into your presence. Lord, you are a gentleman. You're not going to come. You're not going to force yourself on us, but you tell us, come. Come, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Lord, I know in the crowd this size, there are weary and heavy hearts. So, Jesus, I pray for those hearts this morning that they would do just that. Lord, if they're tired of their situation, all they got to do is move. That's all they have to do, Lord, is move toward you in your presence, Jesus. I cannot think, Lord, of a better place to be. Lord, no better place to be than in your presence. So, Holy Spirit, move and speak to us this morning. How lovely is your dwelling place, O oh Lord Almighty, my soul.
tried to fit you in the walls inside my mind. I tried to keep you safely in between the lines. I tried to put you in the box that I designed. I tried to pull you down so we are right to When did I forget that you've always been the king of the world? I try to take life back right out of the hands of the king of the world. How could I make you Just a whisper of your voice can take the sea. So who am I to try to take the lead? Still I run ahead and think I'm strong. Try to take life back right out of the hands of the king of the world. How could I make you so small when you're the one who holds it all? When did I forget that you always been the king of the world? King of the world, you have always been the king of the world. Let's bow our heads together in prayer. Lord, we come to you as not only the king of the world, the king of the universe, the king of all creation. Our prayer is that you're the king of our hearts and lives. There's no question that you have the right. It's only whether we let you rule and reign in our hearts. If that isn't true today, if the words of that song aren't true for us personally, may this a day of surrender, a day of yielding, a day of presenting ourselves as living sacrifices, wholly acceptable unto God. Have your will now in this service, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. I want you to open your Bibles to Daniel chapter 5. I've got a different message. The Lord gave me a different message than when Julie did it before she went on her cruise, she did had to do two bulletins, and so 
Tomorrow is uh, Memorial Day. Uh, Memorial Day was celebrated first in 1868, right after the Civil War, to honor the 600,000 plus people who died in that war. It's hard to conceive with the fact that more people died in the Civil War than any of all of the other wars that we have ever fought in put together. Of course, as years progressed and after World War I, II, Vietnam, and so forth, they have encouraged or in, had expanded the Memorial Day to remember all men and women who have fought for our country and died for our country. We sometimes forget the cost of our freedom. We take it for granted. Our freedom was purchased by the blood of patriots. And uh, that's easy sometimes to forget. I want to preach today on the subject of the importance of remembering. The importance of remembering. Most of you folks will have Memorial Day tomorrow. I had mine yesterday. You say, don't you know how to read a calendar, preacher? I know how to read a calendar. Um, let me explain to you why yesterday was my Memorial Day. Not memorial in the sense of remembering our soldiers, but memorial in the sense of making memories. And yesterday I asked Ellie, I said, Ellie, would you like to go fishing? She said, oh, yeah. So Tom and Frieda were gracious enough to let us come out and As I was putting the tackle in the truck, my old truck, and getting ready to go, it brought back memories to me of my grandfather. And he'd give me a pole or a tackle box, and we'd go out to his old truck and put him in there, truck, and we'd climb up in there, and we'd ride to the pond to go fishing. We didn't turn on the radio. We just sat and talked as we drove out there. And I have discovered there is no easy way to get in Tom and Frieda's house. <laughs> I'm going to have to buy a four-wheel drive next time, I think, just about. But we got out there, and I've taken Ellie fishing a few times, and, and uh, she had never been very successful. I think in all the trips, we've had one catch, one fish. Well, I quit counting at 15 yesterday. But the look on that little girl's face brought joy to this grandpa's heart. It's a memory that I won't forget. We were making memories. Memories are important. We came home and had lunch and then the afternoon I was sitting out on the porch and Ellie came out and we sat there and we just, I rocked and she was in the swing and we just talked. She asked me a question. She said, Papa, she said, how much did this house cost? And I said, more than you've got. So. But I, I told her, I told her about how God had honored us with that land. And I took her inside after we were done talking, and I said, there's the page from that songbook as a testimony to God's blessing. That's a memorial. And it caused me to remember, remember God's blessings in my life. We talked about my mom. She still remembers my mom, even though she wasn't very old when mom passed, but she told me stories that she remembered, and I told her stories that I remembered. And we talked about Memorial Day. She, she didn't know what Memorial Day was about. So I told her about the number of people that had died for our country. And it was just a really special time. Then we had a great dinner that I didn't have to cook. <laughs> like I cook a lot, right? And my family there, remembering is important. 
And it's important that we remember where we live and how we got here. Because when we forget, and I'm afraid that our country has forgotten, when we forget, things don't go the right way. In Daniel chapter 5, we have a story, uh, event in the life of Daniel. We're going to look more at Daniel's life tonight, but um, um, Daniel served under four different kings. The largest portion of his servitude was under Nebuchadnezzar. And um, Nebuchadnezzar had passed away, and, and uh, his son had taken the throne. And the guy that we're going to meet in chapter 5, Belshazzar, was actually his grandson. And he and his father kind of were co-regents reigning over Babylon. We don't know a lot about him, but what we know, it wasn't that good. He wasn't that sharp a guy. He wasn't that smart. But basically, after Nebuchadnezzar had died, Daniel had kind of faded back into the woodwork and um, wasn't as key a part of the leadership like he had been when Nebuchadnezzar was alive. So let's begin reading in chapter 5 and verse 1. Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousands. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes and his wives and his concubines might drink therein. When Nebuchadnezzar had conquered uh, Jerusalem, he had basically stripped the temple of all of its implements and all of the gold and silver and, and fine vessels there. He had put them in storage, and, uh, but uh, Belshazzar, his grandson, decides this is a great thing. He's got a, just a small dinner party of a thousand of his friends. And uh, he, he's obviously drunk and uh, excessively so. And now he orders that these vessels that belong to God be brought in and filled with wine. And everybody use these vessels in, to defame the God of Israel. Then they brought out the golden vessels and were taken out of the temple of the house of God. And his princes' wives and concubines drank in them, and they drank wine. And they praised the gods of gold and silver and of brass and of iron and wood and of stone. There's two things here that are happening. And I believe that they are happening right here in our own country, just like that they were happening in that day. What we don't know yet in this story is that while this party was going on outside of the walls of, of Babylon, outside of this great nation, there were the Medes and the Persians. And they had amassed their troops in preparation for uh, taking over the city. Now, the reason that Belshazzar was so confident in that he could throw such a vast, uh, terrible party and not worry was the fact that Babylon was a tremendously well-fortified city. The walls, they say, were 60 feet thick, 100 feet tall. They were wide enough and 60 miles around. It was a huge city. Over a million people lived within the city. That's hard to imagine for us today. They could take four chariots and race them side by side around the walls of the city. There was a moat all the way around the city, and the river Euphrates literally ran right through the middle of the city. They were fortified on each end so that no one could slip in and, and uh, get into the city. And so Belshazzar thought that he was safe. He thought that he could throw a party. He thought that uh, everything would be fine, that there would be no, nothing to fear. It doesn't matter who's out there. And he had total disregard for what was right and holy and good and moral because it says that they were drunken. It says that they were immoral because his concubines were there. And so this was just a drunken orgy party. That's what was going on. I want you to stop with me for just a minute and think about this. 
Folks, the enemy to this country that we live in is gathered at the gates, and they're ready to take us over. They're ready to bring us down, and we're part of it. We just can't have enough entertainment. We just can't have enough fun. We just can't have enough ways to make ourselves feel good and feel better. And then we have to do more and then more and then more. You see, Belshazzar forgot God. And he forgot the lessons of his grandfather. If you go down to the end of the chapter, Daniel shows up later and... um, he, he says, uh, listen, you, you, here's something I want you to see. I want you to see what you've forgotten. Why is it so important to remember? Because you forget something. Verse 18. O thou king, the most high God, gave Nebuchadnezzar, thy father or grandfather, a kingdom, majesty, glory, honor. Can I tell you something this morning? The reason America is what it is is because God gave us what we have. Amen. That's it. We had brave men and women. We had brave soldiers. We had people that came across the sea. Here's one of the interesting things about the distinctiveness of America. The French came to Canada to find gold. The Spaniards came to South America to find gold. Folks came to America to find God. And that's the difference in our countries and these others around us. And he says, King, you've forgotten something. He said, God has blessed you. Verse 19, for the majesty that he gave him all peoples, nations, languages, trembled and feared before him whom he would slew and whom he would keep alive and whom he would set up and whom he would put down. But, but when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was disposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. If you go back and read back in chapter 4 of of Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar just basically got up and crowed. He said, look at me, look what I've done, look at what I've created, look what I have. I'm the greatest, and and, kind of reminded me of Muhammad Ali a little bit, you know, a little bit. And God says, wait a minute, let let me tell you something. You don't have anything unless I gave it to you. And so Daniel came to him and reminded him of what he said, and, and God took him down, turned him into an animal, grazing, let his hair grow out for years. He, he literally lost his mind. But when God brought it back, he had a different thing to say. If you look back in chapter 4, uh, just a second, then he says in verse 36 of chapter 4, at the same time my reason returned to me, and for the glory of my kingdom and my honor and brightness returned unto me, and my own counselors and my Lord sought unto me and I was established in my kingdom and excellent. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, listen, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, all whose works are true, and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride he is able to abase. Nebuchadnezzar learned his lesson. Belshazzar had forgotten his lesson. He had forgotten what his grandfather went through. He was arrogant, independent, thought he knew better than anything or anyone, thought he could do whatever, thought he was invincible. And so he had lost the sense of reality. I want to tell you something this morning. It doesn't matter who's in the White House, and it doesn't matter who's in the Senate, and it doesn't matter who's in the Congress. The only hope for this country is God. That's it. Because those in the White House and those in the Senate and those in the Congress aren't going to save us. Their agenda is not for you and I and for the good of this country. And it doesn't matter what party you belong to. He forgot the reality of life. He failed to remember the lessons of his grandfather. He failed to remember, and when we fail to remember, we're in trouble. The danger of forgetting. What did he forget? Verse 18, here's what he says. By the way, Daniel had to be Baptist. 
You know how I know? Because he had a three-point outline. Verse 18, he says this, verse 18 and 19, O King, the Most High God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor, and for the uh, majesty that he gave him, all peoples, nations, language trembled and feared before him whom he would slew. He says, listen, power comes from God. That's what he's telling him. Summarize it. He said, power comes from God. And if you have any power, it's because God's given it to you, but you're abusing that power. Verse, the next one, verse 20. He said, but when his heart, that is Nebuchadnezzar, was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was disposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. Pride will cause you to lose your power. Arrogance will cause you to lose your power. You can pretend however you think that it might be. You can trust in the vigilance of your preparation. But folks, in one second, in one moment, in one word, God can change all that and bring you down. Whether it's true for a nation or whether it's true for a person. He says, number three, verse, uh, he says, and so God is going to punish him. He's going to bring you down to your senses. Going to show you exactly what's going to happen. He's going to remind you of who's in charge. He gave Nebuchadnezzar time. He gave him seven years to think about it as he was out in the field grazing like an uh, animal, as he watched his senses go away, his mind go away, his intelligence go away, his power go away. He gave him time, but he said, uh, listen to me, Belshazzar, God's not going to give you any more time. This is your night. This is your day. You've forgotten what you need to remember, and you have forgotten the importance of of who God is, and He's not going to give you any more time. I'm afraid, folks, that the days are numbered for this country. If we don't find a revival, if people don't get serious, we don't go back to 2 Chronicles 7, 14, my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked way and seek their Father. Listen, then He'll heal our land, but until then, until we get serious and remember who gave America what it has. Won't see it. He lost all sense of reality. He also lost all sense of restraint. We have forgotten that the God who looked to and we prayed to in establishing this nation said that sexual permissiveness and perversion is wrong. I don't care what name we put on them. I don't care what title we give them. I don't care how we put a new label on them. It's still wrong. Now, we, we do all of this in a sense because we are basically trying to be forced into acknowledging and approving uh, deviant activities and deviant lifestyles and, and so forth. But we've forgotten. We've forgotten. And we need to start remembering. We need to do what um, Belshazzar forgot to do, and that is that we need to get on our knees before God. So what did God do for him? Look in verse 24. He gave him a message. <laughs> now Don used to be a, a, a cop years ago. Um, and um, I'm sure that he's seen a few drunk people in his time. Beth laughed. I hope that wasn't, she was one of them. I don't know about that, that but anyway. Uh, or he was one of them, I don't know, anyway. But I bet he's never seen anybody sober up like this party did. Huh. Look what it says. Let's read what it says here. Here they are. There's a thousand of them or more, and uh, there's significant others. There could have been a couple of thousand, and they're all having a good time, and everybody's drunk, and everybody's carrying on and acting nasty and, and, and doing all kind of perverted things. And, and all of a sudden, out of the, out of the whole deal, look, a hand comes out, and, and they begin to write, and it writes on the wall. Whew. I don't know about you, but you get my attention. And look what it says in verse 22. 
He says, Thou son Belshazzar hast not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this. So what does it mean? What did he write? Verse 25. This is the writing. By the way, they had to go hunt Daniel up. He was back someplace. He, he had been relegated after Nebuchadnezzar was gone. He'd been relegated to some minor position. The, the thing that we forget about Daniel, even though he was promoted in many, many ways, the whole time that he was there, he was still a slave. And in fact, it was probably Belshazzar's grandmother uh, that says, hey, listen, I know a guy that can help you here. And so they go and they get Daniel and they bring him back in and here's the words that they, they're fine written on the wall, verse 25. And this is the writing that was written, Mini, Mini, Teko, you farson. Anybody want to tell us what those mean? I, guess I thought maybe we had some linguists here. This is what he tells them. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mini, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. He said, listen, the time has come your days are numbered, and you have been found wanting. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and are found wanting. There was a, uh, uh, I can't even think of the word that I want now. There was a legend that uh, when a person died that uh, they would go before whatever God it is that they worshiped, and he would take the person's heart, and he would put it on a scale on one side and a feather on the other side. If the feather outweighed the heart, then the person was good. If the heart outweighed the feather, the person was bad. He said, you've been put on a scale, Belshazzar, and you've been found wanting. I believe that God has weighed this country and found it wanting. And folks, I believe God's found his church wanting in many, many ways too. We've turned to popularity. We've turned to tricks. We've turned to cleverness. We've turned to commercialism. But we fail to turn to him. He says, many, many take all your farce and the last there means divided. Your kingdom is being divided and given to someone else. And there are going to be two that take it over. The Medes and the Persians are going to come in, conquer the city, and they're going to rule in his place. Your days are numbered, and it's going to happen. Verse 30. Read those words with me. That very night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain. And Darius the Mede took a kingdom, being about threescore and two years old. Sixty-two years old. Your days are numbered. How long do we have as a country? How long is it we're going to keep forgetting God and live for ourselves and live for pleasure and live for comfort and, and uh, forget about God? Well, folks, I got news for you. There is a day coming. There is a day coming. There's a day of reckoning, just like there was for Belshazzar. That's why it's so important for us to remember. It's to not only remember the men and women who, who gave their life for their, our country, who died for securing our freedom. We need to do that. That's vitally important. We need to honor those who serve instead of look down on them. We need to honor our country. We still live in the best country in the world. I got an email this week from uh, Cam Poo uh, and his wife, and uh, we've been communicating with them, getting ready for the trip this summer to uh, go over and visit them. And the recent elections in their area, he said, have not gone very well. And that throughout the election process and the campaigning, that uh, the, the individuals who were running for leadership office often used the name of Christians and Christianity uh, to say that they were trying to undermine uh, Hinduism and, and all the other um, re false religions there. And he said many have become, many of these Hindus have become very militant against Christianity. The devil's working. 
and he's working hard, we need to remember. We need to remember what brought us to this place. We need to remember who brought us to this country and who gave us what we have. And we need to turn back to him. We need to turn back to him as individuals, as Christians. We sometimes think that it was the strength of our own hands and the cleverness of our own minds that gave us what we have. What we have we got because God blessed us. And we need to thank him for it. We need to take time and count our blessings and remember the God who blessed us and who takes care of us. Let me ask you a question. What if this were your last day? What if today, this moment, right now, if God came to you and said, this is it? You've been found wanting. What are you going to do? What would you do? Would you take the opportunity to respond to God and yield to God and give your life to God, get right with God? We don't know if that's true or not, do we? Could be. Could be the last day, the last hour, the last opportunity, the last sermon, the last invitation. Don't forget. Listen to God's voice as he calls you today. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Belshazzar forgot. He forgot the lessons of those who went before him. He got confident in his own wisdom, his own strength, and his own power. God, we are nothing without you. New Hope Bible Baptist Church has been blessed, and it has been blessed by you. But God, if we want to continue to be blessed, it will not be because of us. It will be because of you. Our country has been blessed by you, God. We enjoy freedoms that are unknown around this world in many places. But in so many ways, and in so many ways, we have forgotten the cost that people have paid for our freedom. We have forgotten the, the, the God that has provided for this place and blessed this place. Help us to remember today in this Memorial Weekend Help us, God, to turn our heart back towards you. Help us to take and sit down and count our blessings. To do an evaluation. If we were weighed today, would we be found wanting? Is there something in our life that's hindering your work in us, hindering the Spirit of God to work through us, keeping people from finding Jesus? As we go forward as a church, God, help us to keep our mind and our heart focused on you and to remember you and your blessings. If there's somebody here today that's not saved, Lord, may your spirit call them and say, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Ask it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together as we have our invitation. If you need to come today, <coughs> you do what God speaks to you about. Nothing good have I done to deserve God's own son. No, I'm not worthy of the scars in his hands. Oh, yet he chose the road to come.
just remember I'm human and humans forget so remind me remind me dear Lord. if you'd just be seated for just a second please before we dismiss um, 